I thought we'd come back very briefly this morning to Mary. At the end of Luke's account of the Nativity, when we've heard about the glory and excitement of the angel's announcement and the shepherd's dash to Bethlehem, when all of this has subsided, we find Mary pondering. I expect you might have done more than your fair share of pondering in these last few months. When we had more time, some of us were able to take walks in the first lockdown and ponder the creation. Sometimes it was all that kept us sane. We pondered what was happening to our world, to our relationships, to our health, maybe to our livelihoods. We pondered implications for church in a pandemic when all the valuable things that make us church were suspended and we had to rethink what presence means. We pondered our own fragility in the light of news stories about people cut down by the virus and struggling in hospital. We pondered the true value of the low paid workers who keep food deliveries and social care going when everything else shuts down. We pondered why it was that some people in some regions were worse hit by lockdown than others. We pondered how much further UK food poverty could spread when it was already rising before the pandemic. We pondered the same about mental health afflictions. So here, amidst another situation of complexity, hardship and uncertainty, Mary holds her precious baby and we read that she treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. All these words, the excited exclamations of the shepherds, maybe, had they really seen an angel? Mary would not be disbelieving on this count since she herself nine months previously had heard some angelic words that needed quite a bit of pondering. And then the words of the world, travel here, don't travel here, be a number on a form, get yourself to Bethlehem, even if pregnant, there might not be room, but that's not our problem. And the mysterious words of Elizabeth, why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Amidst all these words, all these voices, Mary is the still point in the nativity scene, pondering. We read that she treasured all these words. To treasure something is to return to it again and again, to have and to hold it, to mull it over. For me, it's treasuring the memories of being on holiday in July when our eldest married son and our daughter-in-law could join us for a week. I'm treasuring it especially because they can't be with us today as planned. Perhaps you treasure a piece of jewellery, maybe the ring on your hand, turning it over and over in the light so it can sparkle all the more. We treasure photos of loved ones. I treasure the videos of us worshipping in church and I treasure the music we have enjoyed virtually particularly at the cabaret, which was not just about talent, but also about what makes somebody tick. Watching each person come alive on their video was a moment to treasure, especially if we wouldn't have seen that side to them, were it not for the pandemic this year. The word ponder is from the Latin verb meaning to weigh. St Paul asks the readers of 1 Corinthians to weigh prophetic words spoken in worship. It is such wise counsel. Don't jump to conclusions, turn things over prayerfully. Have you had, ever had the experience where you're having a conversation with someone and you're feeling puzzled or troubled in a complex and perhaps emotional situation? What you really desire from your conversation partner is that they hold space for your uncertainty and stick with you by being empathetic and seeing your difficulty and letting you speak, not interrupting or interpreting or judging. What you sometimes get instead is some quick fire advice. I've never been keen on advice because although it's well-meaning, it actually prevents you from finding the way within you. And for a Christian, there's always a way because the Holy Spirit is going ahead of us. And so we will find the way, even if it emerges slowly. 
So despite falling into the trap many times myself, I try not to give advice. I really value that person who like Mary has the capacity to be a still point within the complexities of life, listening and helping me to weigh what's going on. We need to emulate her pondering. This year has been so overwhelming. I keep thinking of the words in the Epistle of James that warn us about making plans with no regard for the vicissitudes of life. James writes, come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there doing business and making money. Yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring, which seems very pertinent for 2020. Perhaps we should all rediscover the phrase Deo Valente, God willing. 2021 will be better, God willing. 2020 may still serve up some good fruit, God willing. So in the unplanned pregnancy, unplanned travel, unplanned room for the night and unplanned vocation to be Theotokos, the God bearer, Mary is wise to ponder. When we ponder what is happening in our lives, ponder what's emerging in the world, we utilize the spiritual gift of discernment. When we discern the way forward, we reserve judgment until things unfold. We resist the quick pat answers or things that worked in the past. Instead, we say, there's something going on here, but as yet we are not sure what it is, but it will unfold, God willing. Our own sanctification is unfolding, although it's hard to see it in the business of church life sometimes. Various crises are unfolding in the world with multiple signs indicating we need to ponder urgently. COVID-19 has made this all the more obvious. So we're invited this morning to ponder Mary, sitting with her baby, treasuring what's been said and wondering. At this still point, as she gazes into the baby's face, she knows that meaning will emerge, just like a bulb emerges from the hard ground. She knows that light and life and healing will emerge if she holds on to the Christ. So this morning, I invite you to ponder Mary as a model of contemplation. She is mulling it over, reserving judgment, waiting for things to unfold. She doesn't understand everything that's happened, but she is holding on to God, literally, even as God holds on to her. May we know ourselves held on this most special of days. Amen.